And we are live. Welcome to episode nine, Wilkinson Live. Great to be here with you guys and, and glad you're here. Seven billion people in the world, okay, and you guys decided to come here to hang out, be a part of the community, learn, and not get puked on by the cesspool that is the mainstream media and YouTube, Facebook, fake book, uh, and all the rest of it. So happy to be here with you guys, okay? As always, teleprompter free, okay? Teleprompter free, and today we're talking about influence and objection handling, and, and I need you guys to be active in this chat because the more active in the chat you are, the more robust this show will be, the more robust our dialogue will be, and I guarantee you're going to get more out of it, the more, you know, you engage in the deal, okay? Now, if you're working, I'm with you. If you're on the couch, I'm with you. If you're driving in a car, I'm with you. I'm hanging with you, and I'll never let you down. If there's anybody who could ride shotgun with you, ride till the wheels fall off, anybody who you want in a foxhole with you, I guarantee you, out of all these other guys, I'm the guy. So, so let's, let's go, baby. We got Omar, who's lighting the chat up right now. Omar is a winner, man. Welcome to the winner circle, okay? This social media community is amazing. I don't care how many people are in it. Seven billion people in the world. I don't need 4,000 people on a live, dude. I need the right people on a live. And that's what matters. We need to expand in the marketplace, all of us, okay, and show the world what it's about, what we can do, how great we can be, and to come over here and get out of the darkness. Let's go, AJ. What's up, William? Glad to have you here, brother. So how many of you guys, okay, how many of you guys really, I mean, be honest with yourself, wish you could up your influence game? Meaning, you know, getting, get much stronger in your negotiations, get much stronger in influencing outcomes, getting people to do things that they should be doing, getting people to do things for you, influencing an outcome in your favor. In my opinion, and I'm obviously biased, but in my opinion, that is the superpower of life. If there ever was a skill to master and to learn, that would be the skill. It's not only is it the highest paying skill, but it's the most satisfying, fulfilling, and you are in the most control. Okay, and that's, and that's what it's all about. Because think about this, okay? When it comes to influencing an outcome and influencing people, by the way, I'm jumping right into it. I'm going to jump right in. I got some notes to keep me on track because you guys know that I'm verbose and I could go tangential. When it comes to influencing people, you got to remember that this entire game is about communication and psychology. That's all it is. If you're going to spend time learning something, you're going to be great at something, dude, be great at communication and psychology. You need to communicate with people every day, okay? Not just verbal. You're doing it on the, on the text. You're doing it on the email. It's all communication. And guess what you're doing? You're breaking extremely poor and irrational psychologies with people. Seven billion people on the world, the planet's broken because the people are broken. Okay, so the people you're going to come in contact with and deal with in growing your business, in living a, a flavorful and very colorful life full of experience, you're going to bump into people, you're going to come in contact and communicate with people who are completely broken, extremely skewed goals, ideals, philosophies, and irrational. So if there's anything to learn, this is it. And if you're going to spend any time mastering anything, it's going to be this. It should be this, in my opinion. It's a superpower of superpowers. Let me call out a few people here. We got Omar. We got AJ. Happy to have you here. William McKee. Nathan's back. Good to see you, brother. Nathan, great guy. Can we call the show The Winner's Circle? We can call it The Winner's Circle. Wilkinson Live, The Winner's Circle. Let's go, man. Let's go. Guess what? You're talking to the boss. So I appreciate the feedback. I love it, man. I love it. I do always getting better. Exactly. That's what it's about. It's about always getting better. This is something that you think you could master. You're going to get to a point in communicating and influencing that is like a, it's what I call a good enough factor. You will get good enough. And you'll be very competent and you can do well. Okay. But you're always going to learn. You're always going to get better and, and sharpen your sword. And that's what we're, we're trying to do here today. 
Okay, let's go. Sounds good. You like the winner's circle. Awesome. Okay. Influencing people, persuasion, you know, whatever you want to call it, it has a pejorative in the world. And, you know, I really don't think people have been burned by people in the past. There's no doubt about it. No question. Obviously, we all know that. I really think that that's marketing based on media and based on, you know, Hollywood. Because, I mean, people have been burned, but how, I mean, 300, 7 billion people in the world, 300 million people in the U.S., how many times are you getting burned by a guy? You know what I th think? It's people who can't do it poo-pooing it. I think that people are so scared and irrational that they project their fear and their not knowingness and their inexperience and failure to be good at this thing on words of, of influence and persuasion and they make it sound like a bad thing. When in fact, it's the greatest thing. It's what make, makes economies go, it's what makes markets run, and it's what's gonna change your life. If you can persuade and, and influence people, you'll be in control. And that's what this entire thing is about, okay? It's about controlling encounters, remember that. Listen, guys, you don't wanna micro, I mean, you don't wanna macro manage, micro manage, okay? Like, People who don't believe micromanaging, they read that somewhere. They had to have read that somewhere because you know when you micromanage works. You put resources in place, you, you have to get, but you need to be on top of those things. Micromanage, did you hit your targets today? What's the plan for today? What are your goals? What are the targets? This is what has to get done. I check in every hour. You done yet? You done yet? You done yet? You done yet? I micromanage gets done. What do you think happens when we go general's like okay guys this is effective okay i'll talk to you guys next week it's constant communication with the front line are we making it are we pushing through have we broken through yet do we take the fire base how many how many things do we need to bring you need help how can i help you you need support micromanaging when you micromanage okay i don't even like that word micromanage that's written by some guy in an ivory tower somewhere some suit some some professor never closed the door couldn't do telling you what you need to do makes up some it's just being in control okay it's not micromanaging it's being when you are in control hear me out man when you are in control you can guide things and steer things in your direction when let me put it to you this way when you're not in control that means someone else is in control and when someone else is in control, what do you think is going to happen? You think it's going to work out in your favor? You think when someone's in control, they're going to make you? Come on, man. I got a bridge for you. It's in bridge. If you the case. Okay, if somebody else is in control, then they're calling the shots. That means they're causing things to happen. Then you're the effect of things, which means you're going to be a victim of every decision they make. I will not live my life as a victim. I will live my life in control, okay? And when I'm in encounters, in a business deal, in a negotiation, in a cold call, meeting somebody for the first time, I'm at a bar, I meet a woman, whatever it is, I'm in control of this encounter and I'm in control of everything I could possibly be in control in my life. That's how you, that's how you, listen, when I started taking control of my life, I mean, really getting crazy about this thing, that's when everything got better, man. Think about all the puke and shit that goes on in your life and it's nothing to do with you. People don't puke and shit on me. They know, homie, don't play that. You can't enter this bubble. You start puking on me, you are out of here fast. You got to be the same way. Now, what that's going to do is going to give you altitude. If you couple that with your experience, your knowledge and your know-how, what you know, your expertise, and you keep this mentality with you, you will have altitude, okay? Communicating, handling objections, influencing a person, closing them, getting them to say yes, getting them to ink the deal, getting a girl to go out with you, negotiating the bet on the car, all of that is gonna, be, is gonna come from keeping altitude. So you get altitude with these two things. You get altitude with control and your expertise, they come together as one. If you're not an expert, be one. If you're not an expert, be an expert in the making. You'll be that much better than everybody else and control everything. 
if you're not willing, let me tell you, okay? You may not like the sound of here. It's the truth. And in my experience, it's the gold. It's easier being in control than not being in control. Dude, it's much easier doing the right thing than not. It's much easier waking up in the morning and going to work than not. You know how hard it is being a loser? Being a loser is a hard thing, man. You know how it is being poor? It's terrible. It is freaking terrible, man. You know how hard it is being a victim? What a terrible existence and a terrible life. That's hard work. You're worrying all the time. You don't know what's going to happen. You can't plan anything. You got no resources. You're stuck in hell. You're living in the darkness. If you take control, man, you move to the light. You move to the light and it's much easier because all you got to do is do it. Just get up and go. Show up, man. Show up. Okay. Some of the most important and I think profound concepts and principles when it comes to selling, negotiating and closing are the most simple ones. They just by definition cannot be the most complex ones because complexity Okay, complexity delivered by humans is going to break down every time. Simplicity works. Simplicity is going to allow you to, to duplicate and replicate your actions. But they got to be, it's got to be the right ones, man. It's got to be logic. It's got to be taking control. It's got to be keeping altitude. You want to know why this is so effective? Because no one does it. People are, do not have altitude in their life. They're extremely low tone. They're living in a place that sucks. They believe what they read, on t uh, read in the magazine, see on TV, the pop culture of the world, what they get here on the stations on Instagram and these other spots, YouTube and everything else. They're not empowered people living in control. So when someone comes and takes the lead and says, boom, I'm taking this. I got control. I have altitude. By the way, I built this fire over here. It's warm. It's cold out there. You come sit by here. You sit next to me and warm up. That's an incredibly appealing proposition for people. By the way, when you're doing the right thing for them, that's what's going to make you successful. I mean, look, if you're going to be great at something, then you're going to have to do things that other people aren't. Being great and top notch is an extreme. You can't get to an extreme without doing extreme things. Take extreme control in your life, dude. I'm telling you, you're going to call me up. You're going to DM me. You're going to come here and say, I've been taking control and like, I've been a control freak and it's been amazing because the results are going to be off the charts. And what's going to happen? People will fall in line. People follow a strong leader. When they know you don't play, they know I can't puke on this guy. They know, you know what? I should listen to this guy. And that's going to come across in all of your communications. That's the communication portion of this, an influence. The other portion is psychology. And we break and crack people's bad psychology with logic. It's communication and psychology. Okay? This is million dollar stuff here. It's priceless. Because aside from the money and in business, you're going to have a robust and very, you know, Colorful, beautiful, fantastic life, rich life, full of experience because you're getting out of the darkness, off the couch, and in control, and people will follow you. I don't care how much snow is on the roof with a guy, how much gray hair he's got, how long he's been in the business, okay? I got guys in my world that have been in the business. They're 60 years old. I'm a 28-year-old kid, and they went and fell right behind me because I led the charge. It's refreshing. People want that. I want that. I'm sniffing around. Who's leading the charge here? Okay, I'm riding with him. Who's this guy? Believe me, do not get, uh, get freaked out or negged out because people are older than you. People have done this deal 10,000 times and you've only done it 10. It don't matter. Every deal is different. I don't care how many freaking buildings you built, man. I don't care how many water treatment plants. I don't care how many stadiums you built. This stadium is mine. And this stadium's going to be different. I don't care how many houses you built, Mr. Hoover. The next house is what matters. You already built that one. On to the next one. Guess whose house that is? That's yours. 
I'm in control of this ship. I don't care how many of these you built. This is how we're going to do it. People are going to go lockstep. They're going to get right behind that. The people who don't, who needs them? It's like the guys that come in here, that puke, or the people that aren't here. I am not worried about one single person that's not here. I'm worried about this, the eight people that are here. Because the eight people that are here are the ones that matter. They're the ones getting after it. Not, not, the, not the seven billion people who aren't. I'm in control of this world. You are in my world. This is the winner's circle. I'm in control of it. I built a fire. I said, hey, come sit here. Let's all of us get warm and take it to the next level. That's communication. That's how you grow and be strong in communication. Does this make sense? Resonate to you guys. Give me a yes. Give me a yes or yes in the chat. We got Omar in the chat. I love this guy. Okay. The next piece of this equation is the psychological piece here. Yes, AJ. Yes, baby. Stanley. Yes. See, the next piece of this thing is the psychology. This is what everyone gets screwed up on. By the way, this is the sexiest part, isn't it? Let me get closer to you guys. This is the sexiest part. Everybody wants a skill. Everybody wants to know, how can I be smooth? How can I say the right things? How can I be the closer, man? I'm sick and tired of getting beat. You know, I'm sick and tired of talking with a guy and having this dialectic and getting beat by him or getting beat by my wife or beat by my kids in this area or my coworker. Okay. We're going to make sure that doesn't happen anymore. Nobody's going to beat you. Not after you understand this. And these are simple concepts. Okay. That are going to take your game to the next level, man. Believe me, Nathan, my man always resonates. Chris in the house, Nathan in the house and Hunter in the house. Happy to have you guys here. Teleprompter free. Wilkinson Live, the winner's circle. Okay, credited by, who said it? Hunter. The reason why people suck at this thing is what I'm gonna outline. Now, in my previous streams, I outlined like six or seven. I'm outlining a few more here that I wasn't able to get to on the streams, because like I said, here's what I'm doing from here on, I'm piecemealing this thing. Today, I'm going to talk about a few concepts. The hierarchy today is communication psychology, okay? And in subsequent shows, I'm going to get a little bit deeper. Dr Dude, dropping all the data on you in two hours isn't going to help you. And that's what everybody does. Here, puke, blah, I'm going to puke on you. It doesn't work, man. The seed's got to get planted. It's got to germinate. It's got to get watered, and it's got to grow. And so I want this to be effective, and I want you guys being here to be something that's going to be beneficial for you. So you come back and say, hey, man, I need to refill here. I'm thirsty. Wilkinson's got the water. I'm cold. Wilkinson's got the fire. That's the type of life I want to live. Reasons people fail at this game and they can't do it. Number one, if you guys are taking notes down, if not, you're listening, you're driving, I'm with you. Remember this. Number one, okay, you guys take in the bait when handling objections. How many people saw my new video called, what's it called? Don't take the bait or handling of, what, what's it called? What's the title of that thing? I'll tell you right now. The title is Objections are Bait. Yeah, 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 that's the title. Objections are bait. That's exactly what they are. They're bait. I recommend, I think it's a four minute video. I recommend everybody watch that video because what an objection is, listen, Cardone says an objection is a complaint. He's right. It is a complaint. Here's how I'm going to describe it. The reason why Cardone's right with this is because you're not validating the objection like everybody else is. How many times somebody give you an objection and then you recite the objection back to them because you don't know what the hell to do. Uh, listen, you know, listen, Nathan, okay? This is too much money, man. Oh, oh it's too much money? Why the, why the hell would you recite it back to the guy? You recite it back to the guy because you're validating this thing. The key and, and what I do and what works and the stuff you guys hear me do and you go, oh, man, that's legit is I do not take the bait. When you take the bait, you get hooked. Man, when you get hooked, you can't spit the hook, and then you're finished. It's over. He got you. 
downward spiral. By the way, you also lost your altitude by validating an objection. Listen, if you're an F-18, you're maverick, okay? You are maverick in this thing, okay? Maverick ain't going to come down. Maverick's going to buzz the tower, man. Maverick's going to be with the Admiral's daughter, you know what I mean? Top Gun reference for the older guys here, okay? I'm not taking the bait, dude. It's too much money. I don't have time. I got to talk to my wife. I need to talk to my accountant. How many times you hear that? Call me in three months. It's all bullshit. Okay, I ain't, I ain't taking the bait. You taking the bait. Okay, watch my video. I go into that further on my video. It's called Objections or Bait. By the way, dude, I don't care. <laughs> if it's a lot of money, so what? What's it matter? You bought a house for $700,000, dude. Okay, I'm selling you a program for $2,000 a month. Is it a lot of money? Stu it's ridiculous. You bought a $700,000 house. You spent $8 today on a cup of coffee. You complained and they said, yeah, listen, I know. How do you want to pay for it? You go, fuck it, put on a credit card. I mean, these are just complaints. So what Cardone says, I say that they're, they're bait because once you bite, it's over. You bite on one complaint, you bite on one objection, show's over for you, man. You're going to lose it because now you've, you've lost your altitude and you're in this little this little wrestling match with this guy. And he's like, yeah, 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 I got this guy. I'm going to weasel out of this. Huge point here, man. Huge point. Do not validate objections. Marshall, it's a lot of money. I agree. Sign here. Marshall, it's a lot of money. No, I agree. Do it anyway. Marshall, it's a lot of money. Was that a problem? Because it's not about the money. It's about the solution. How many people don't care what you pay for or how much a thing costs if it gets you what you want? How many people in the show recognize that? I don't care what it costs. I care about what it's going to get me. So, so you could pay money. Remember, you're here sitting next to my fire. I'm keeping my altitude. It means nothing. By the way, it is a lot of money, and everybody who's ever done this has said the same thing. Sign here. It's, it's, it's too much money, Wilkinson. Listen, I agree, but I'll tell you what, be very grateful you're in a position so you could benefit from this. Here you go. I ain't taking the bait. I'm not validating the objection. Until later down the line, I realize that it's a valid objection. But when they start firing off the flares, it's meaningless. This is number one here in objection handling, guys. Okay, this may sound like common sense or something you heard before, but are you doing it? Because I know when you're on the phone, I know when you're on the phone, you're, you're sweating. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, 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 what do I say? Where's my script? Here's the hack. It's all a lie. It's all BS. It, it, it ain't right, man. They're scared to death. Trust me, dude. I've, all I deal with is objections. You think people would just lay down? No, man, I got to talk. I got to break your bed. Like, I got to listen. I got to get on lives. I got to get on my Instagram 150 times a day to get you to the damn show. You're objecting the entire time. Doesn't mean you're not interested. Because what does not interested mean? Who watched my video? Not interested is a level of interest. Okay. Only a pro will understand that. By the way, I broke that video down. Cardone said that took tons of heat for it from Belfort and that whole crew okay and 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 the guy was right and the big man G was 100% correct it is a level of interest the bottom level of interest and it's our job to take you to the top because mate you wouldn't you wouldn't not be interested if you never even heard about it in the first place if i never contacted you you don't know my name you don't know my product or service you couldn't even be at the level and not interested now the fact is you know me the fact is, you know what I do, and you're now on the interest scale, just the bottom. My job is to get you to the top. That's a pro psychology, because that's going to keep you in the game doing follow-up, because all fortune's in the follow-up. Let's go. What do we got? Who we got in the chat now? Agree, it's a lot of money. Doesn't mean it's not the right thing to do. How about this? When something's the right thing to do, we do it, wouldn't you say? Wouldn't you agree? Hey, let me ask you a question. 
Adding time to things that are important isn't the right thing, right? Hey, would you agree to this, that if we add time to doing something that's going to help you in a massive way, make you money, that would be a bad thing to do, wouldn't you agree? Well, this is one of those times. Now, how do you deliver something like that to somebody? Altitude. You got to be strong. You guys are listening to this and be like, man, I can't deliver that. Wilkinson can deliver it. I can't because I'm keeping my altitude, man. I don't talk to these people. I talk at these people. I command. I make my argument. I command people. I take control. What did I say earlier? I'm in control. And what do people do? Fall behind leaders, bro. People fall behind control. Okay? The people who are going to pay you and be your customer, they fall behind control. The people who are never going to pay you, hammering Bud Lights at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, completely low-tone people, you know, they're not going to fall behind you. They're going to go hang out with the rest. They're in the darkness. They're in a living hell. You don't need that. Shouldn't even be wasting your time thinking about them. I love this. Let's highlight that. I can't believe this. You know what I mean, brother? Oh, my man, Josh Warshaw's in here. Great guy. Family man. I went to school with, uh, I went to elementary school, middle school, some high school with this guy. Fantastic guy. Josh, thank you for being here, man. Appreciate that. I appreciate that, brother. I love you, man. Baruch Hashem, my brother. Um, the same customer who says, this is from Nathan Reynolds. The same customer who says it's too much leaves your place of business and drops 20K at a casino. <laughs> Excellent point. The guy who says it's too much goes out and what does he do? Spends, spends $200 at the bar. Because... He didn't care about the money. He cared about what he was going to get out of it. And what he wants to get is hammered. He's, he wants to get hammered drunk. Let me ask you a question. Why does somebody want to get hammered drunk? They're trying to escape from something. Guy's getting hammered drunk. What's the problem, dude? You, you don't like reality. Why would you alter your reality? The only time you alter reality, you do drugs, you get hammered drunk is because you don't like the current situation. How about this? Take control, come up with a plan, and make your life a super life. Put the booze down, bro. People much rather buy the Louis Vuitton. This is from Omar. By the way, Omar, big-time transportation executive in, uh, in Los Angeles. Guy is driving a car in a suit, sharp, smelling like a million bucks. Okay. Transportation fleet listening to Wilkie right now. Guarantee he's in the car. People much rather buy the Louis Vuitton and act like they got it, but can't pay the men to learn how to close, pull the trigger, put it on a credit card, let's roll. What's a credit card for, man? Credit card is not, is not to buy stupid shit. The credit card is not to buy Louis Vuitton. The credit card is, is, a, is credit from the bank that you use to bridge with your business, with your life and your future. Not some bullshit. Justify the ROI on your product and you can charge what you want. You're selling a solution. Okay? You're selling a solution. If I could give you 250000 this year for twenty five grand, would you take it? Of course you would. Let's go. There's your ROI built into the wrap right there. Listen, if I could put 15% or more on the board for you this month, you give me a minute. This guy's going, shit. I could hear about potentially getting 15% or more on the board for giving this guy 30 seconds and I'm going to beat up on him the whole time. Little does he know that you're an F-18 and you're going to deploy your ordinance. We got my man in here, Keith Webb. Everybody knows this guy. DJ Keith, follow him on my Instagram. Glad having you here, man. He's a great friend of mine, okay? On an entrepreneurial journey right now, being a business guy. It only took him knowing me for about 20 years to freaking kick that into gear. You know what lit that fire? Sitting in a drop-top Porsche, getting an opportunity, lining up, going, hey, you know what? I could have a super life, too. My man. What's up, Danny? What's up, Danny? Okay, whenever I have time. Oh, my man, Josh, I appreciate that. Thank you, man. He has the Porsche. Yes, he has the Porsche. He has the Porsche, and uh, he's enjoying it, and he's loving it, and uh, that's, what the fuck, that's what the fuck it's about. <laughs> Okay, number two, you don't know how to pressure. So what was number one? Hold on, hold on. I, I gave you a lot of data there. I know I was talking. What was number one? Put it in the chat. Reasons people can't do this. The first reason I said was what? Just made a video on it. Just made a video on it. 
Came to Marshall with a dream and he exposed me to the luxury in business. Listen to luxury in business. Let's roll. That's, that's, that's a fact. This is one of my clients. I coach this man. Yes, I do. Out in it today. Keith's in the Porsche. Okay, what was the first thing I said, guys? I just made a video on it. I just want to rehash this so the 11 people here listening get some dialogue, get going, get learn something from this. Let's keep a robust community going here. The first thing I said was you're taking the bait by handling an objection. Just made a video on it. Do not take the bait. When you take the bait, you can't spit the hook. When you got that hook in your mouth, it's over, man. You, in, it, you got an uphill battle to bring this guy to reality, to have a rational decision to make a move with you today. Don't bite the hook. Here we go. Exactly. AJ, I'm going to highlight you. AJ. By the way, AJ, Beaumont Builders, Florida, custom luxury homes, this guy right here. See, here's the thing about this community. There's players in my community, man. Everybody that come here is a hitter, man. Hitter. Okay, number two. You don't know how to pressure. You don't know how to pressure professionally because you've been told your whole life, don't put pressure on people, man. Do not pressure people. It's not polite. It's not the right thing to do. Who saw my video on pressure? Anybody? Danny, you got to catch up, brother. Who saw the video? By the way, audio, visual, good, good and good. Here's the thing with pressure, okay? By the way, Keith Webb, you're still in, you still in the building? Put something in the chat. Want to know you're still here, mate. Want to hold you accountable. Stay in here. I know you got to put the kids to sleep. Here's the thing with pressure and the reason why you don't know how to do it. It's because you've been told not to. Here's the problem. Here's the crazy oxymoron and the contradiction here. The contradiction is your entire life is pressure. Everything in your life is pressure, but you don't want to pressure other people. Okay, here's the thing. Okay, you, you studied for the test the night before. You did all your homework the morning, minutes before the class. You were pressured to brush your teeth. You were pressured to go to sleep at a certain time. You were pressured to finish high school. Okay, you're pressured to do your taxes. You're pressured to get an oil change. You don't get an oil change till the car starts shaking and rattling. Okay, and you wait till the light goes on to get gas. Your entire life is about pressure, but for some reason you want to give somebody else the luxury. It doesn't make sense, man. Pressure makes diamonds, and all the good things that happen to you in your life were pressure. My guy Keith is in here. See if he's still in here. I think we called him out. I think he jumped. My guy Keith is in here. He got pressured to get married. Loves that, loves that he did it. Best thing he ever did. He's got two kids. Pressured to get married. Wife was getting, getting kicked out of the land. He goes, you know, I've been with this girl for years. This visa thing ain't working. I'm going to marry her anyway. I might as well do it now. That's pressure, man. Worked out. Everything good in your life is because of pressure. If you were going to get hit by a car, I'd push you out of the way. If, you were in a, in, if I saw you in a burning building, I'd pull you out of it. If my friend's going to jump off a bridge, I'm going to grab him by the scruff of the neck and pull him back. Okay? That's delivering professional pressure to a guy. When you're being irrational and you've admitted that you see the benefits and it could be working for you and you could afford it, you still have a barrier. I'm going to, you better believe I'm going to pressure you. Nothing gets done until the close is there. Nobody wins until we get the exchange. By the way, if this is the right thing to do, as an, as an expert and a guy with the altitude, I'm going to make sure we get it done. I'm definitely going to do my absolute utmost for you. People don't know how to do that. People are deathly afraid of doing that. It's because everything they learned is contra to pressure. Because you're a nice guy, aren't you? Your mama raised a good person. You, everybody here is a good person. Everybody on this call is a good person. Being nice and being good does not equate with pressure. Meaning, you don't, because you pressure a guy and you're convicted on a thing, doesn't mean that now you're an asshole. Doesn't mean that now you're not a nice guy. I'm a very nice guy and a good guy. I'm not going to bust your balls unless I have to. But believe me, dude, if I have to, I'm going to be down your throat. I'll put a foot up your ass real quick. Doesn't mean I'm not a nice guy. Okay? They screwed you on that. By the way, on last shows, we looked up the definition of nice. Who remembers what the definition of nice is? 
By the way, I love this show. I love doing this. This is fantastic. This is fantastic. Every time I had success was when I was uncomfortable and needed to act. All of us. You are going to play harder when you're 10 points down in the game than when you're 20 points up in the game. That's why I tell all salespeople, dude, you make money, I need you spending it. I need you back here tomorrow like you never earned a dollar until you can build that muscle, man, until you don't have a money problem anymore and deals are not, 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 deals are breaking and not closing because of money. You know how you break a money issue? Spending it. If I ask you for five grand right now, everybody on this call, and I'm not offering this, but I'm saying, everybody on this call, you know if you got with me one-on-one, -on -one, I'd elevate your game. It's five grand. Who's going to write a check? Scared to death. If you're the first guy to go, dude, I'll write you a check for five, no issues. Let's roll, baby. I know that guy's going to be a winner, man. Because when he's out there and he says, oh, by the way, this is 120000 This is 120000 for the year. It's a five-year deal. And the guys start losing their mind. He's going to be cool as a cucumber because money ain't a thing. Because when you got security, this is, the, this is my whole story. I should have been on this, and everybody agrees. I should have been on this thing. Years ago, man, and I wouldn't. And Grant Cardone, 3 million followers on Instagram, 2 million on YouTube. How stupid do I got to be? I'm talking about the business celebrity of our lifetime calls me up and says, what are you doing? During COVID, Grant Cardone calls me. He's like, I haven't seen you. I don't see a post. What's going on? And I still don't do it. People would die for Grant Cardone to call them. Grant Cardone calls me during the time. I go, shit, I ain't answering that. Because I know he's going to bust my balls. So when I'm talking to you, I'm talking to me. Believe me. That's why I love this community. What is this? Someone in my dad. What is this? Oh, someone in my dad's company left because of pressure during pandemic. Won't let. Dude, pressure makes diamonds. Listen, that guy's got to move out. You got to remember the timing in business, dude. Timing is something you have zero control over. That's why what you need to worry about when you're communicating, handling objections, doing deals is output. The only thing I can control is output. I can't control how many people come here. I can't control how open-minded people are, but I can control being here every day at 5 p.m. doing my thing. Output, 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 because timing will handle itself. Being nice doesn't pay the bills. Being nice is basically, it comes from the French, the middle French and the, the middle English of being ignorant, basically being dumb, being a court jester. Everybody on this call knows a nice person who's exactly that, just a blithering idiot who gets taken advantage of and people walk all over. That word comes from the old English and the middle French for, you know, basically a moron. So I ain't a nice guy. How about this? I don't want you guys being nice. I want you being competent. I don't want you guys being nice. I want you being fair. I don't want you being nice. I want you doing the right thing. How's that? That's much better. Dan Pena always says, if love got the job done, everybody would be rich. Pe that goes over people's head. If love and religion got the job done, everybody would be completely empowered. The fact is it doesn't. You got to fall in line. You got to learn some things. You got to relearn some things and hit things at a new angle. AJ Hoover, I'll take it. AJ, I can help you big time, but I... My emphasis is, is not really on the one-on-one on one now. I shouldn't be turning it down, but I love you. Okay, facts. Uh, that's a 24x return on a 4K, 5K investment. Okay, well said. Awesome. Number three. Number three reason why it, this is hard for people, okay, is because people in general... And, and guys, you know this is going to be true when I say this. I want you to think of your wife, your girlfriend. I want you to think about your mother and your father. When things would flare up, what, what they would say and how they would react. You're scared of handling emotions. You're scared of getting a rise out of people. You don't want to offend anybody. Because when, when things didn't go your way when you were a kid and you got after it, okay, your mother came raining down on you. Your old man came raining down on you, didn't he? You can't... Emotions, man. Emotions pop up. Scares the shit out of you. Nathan's doing a monster deal here in real estate development. 
if Nathan is involved in this thing at a high level and at the meetings and at the progress meetings and analyzing the construction schedule and dealing with subcontractors or dealing with a project manager or dealing with a project executive, he's going to know. So will A.J. Hoover. In this game, emotions. And that construction and real estate game, boom, emotions. They fly. And if you can't deal with them, you're never going to close. This whole idea of communication and psychology and influencing is going to be a, a tough hoe. This is part of the psychology part. When somebody flips, hits it, man, hit the roof, you cannot react. You have to be extremely stone cold killer Spock-like. Let me ask you a question. For the people in here that have a family who have had children or have had young babies around them, when the baby cries, do you cry? Let me ask you, when the baby cries, if you crying also, would that help the situation? Of course not. It's absurd. When somebody hits the moon, you got to be cool. They will come back down to earth and they will come. They will come back to the serious minded person, the person with stability. But people are afraid of handling emotions. This guy says for sure. And they always do, especially in his world. You're building a guy a house for five million bucks. OK. That's probably his biggest investment. Or even in the lower market, the middle market, you're building a house for $600,000. That's the guy's most expensive investment in his life. Okay. The old lady's in there saying, hey, man, I don't like the way you cut this tile. I don't like the hue on this tile. And the motions hit the roof. Okay. And you got to handle that. And by the way, this will dictate how successful you are, how well you handle people's emotions. When you, when you cold call somebody and they pick up the phone, Okay, and they know, shit, this is a sales call. That's emotion right there. You are entering and dropping into his space and you are completely uninvited. And he's trying to get off the phone with you fast. Listen, I'm busy, man. That's emotion. Most people can't handle the objection because they don't know how to deal with emotion. Listen, man, I'm really busy. I understand. Give me a minute. Just give me a minute. Okay? He's like, I'm busy. Just give me a minute. Calm. Just give me a minute. Uh, okay. And then you start your rap. Hey, listen, I'm really busy. I don't got time. Just give me a minute. I, I get it. Just give me a minute. It's the simple stuff, man. So many just give me a minute, okay? Hunter's on this call, on this show today, watching. He'll tell you, the just give me a minute thing works for him all the time. Because we're trying to buy five more seconds with the person so they're going to hang up on us. You're scared of handling emotions. The next thing, you don't know how to handle a no. People are afraid of hearing no. People are afraid of being rejected. Listen, a no is not rejection. This is probably going to get chopped up and, and go all over the, uh, this, the world. Wilkinson said no is not a rejection. No, it's not. <laughs> I don't, when a guy says a no to me, I don't take that as rejection. I say, listen, AJ, dude, don't give me a no. Give me a maybe. How about, listen, I understand where you are. I agree. Okay. Just do this for me. Take the no, make it a maybe. Okay. Let me ask you, how can I, how can I make the no a maybe? Very simple. Don't give me a no, man. Give me a maybe. AJ, give me a maybe, man. Don't give me a no. Come on. How many times does that work for me? We got a consultant. I'm not interested. Listen, I understand, dude. Don't, don't give me a no. Just give me a maybe. And they laugh. Nobody's ever said that to them. When a guy says no, everybody goes, oh, okay. Uh, well, 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 what is it? Uh, 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 nah, come on, man. I'm not taking the bay here. No is not a rejection. No is not a rejection. This is like contra to social norms and human psychology. This is why not many people can do this. That's why not many people can be great at this thing. That's why we got a, we got a country full of victims because, because the culture has taught them all the wrong things to do and instilled all the wrong things for them. So when they get out here in the marketplace to say, okay, I, I'm going to make my stand, they get kicked in the teeth and they quit. No ain't a rejection to me, man. You got to have to tell me no a whole bunch of times because I'm trying to move you from a, may, from a no to a maybe. By the way, what's the real deal? Is it me? Is it the product or is it the money? Okay. 
I use this analogy. You want to buy a car. Everybody on this call wants a Ferrari 488, 458, brand new Porsche 911 Carrera. Not everybody on this show today can afford that. Doesn't mean you're not interested in it. <laughs> That's why, dude, not interested is in level of interest. Okay? You want a Rolls Royce Ghost, you can't afford it. Doesn't mean you ain't interested. Shit. If you could afford it, you'd be very interested. Am I wrong? I ain't getting rejected on a no, man. Give me the no, make it a maybe, dude. Let's be reasonable here. Okay? How about this? Leave the door open for me, man. You don't know how to handle a no. Let's get back to the chat. I do need to do a better job keeping it cool. Yeah. I usually take a break before responding. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's probably not a bad thing, I guess, taking a break. I don't. I like to hit something now. Okay? Unless I'm in a negotiation and strategically I'm trying to go silent on a person. Make them think that I'm mad. Make them think I'm walking away from the deal. Then I'll, then I'll take a break and I'll go silent on a guy. Because, wow, when I, we finally reconnect, it's like, I, it's like I reset the table. But if somebody's getting emotional, okay, I'm going to sit there and take it. I'm going to handle it right there. But that's probably, in your world, probably not a bad thing to do. Hunter, tonality's critical with that. Which one? Give me a minute. Which one? Dropping fire. That's what we're here for. By the way, all of this stuff should be fire and should make sense to you because I'm a person who actually knows how to do this, so I'm telling you what I've done. When you're watching a live, it's not compelling, it's not entertaining, and the shit don't make sense. It's because he made it up, mate. It's because he read it in a book right here, and he's just regurgitating it. Because things that work and are practical that make sense are compelling. You go, oh, shit, you know what? That's right. I could, I could see myself using that, doing that, and getting success from it. That's why you come back, because it's real. And by the way, the stuff that's the most potent is the simple stuff. It's the easiest stuff. How many deals I get, I've gotten by, hey, man, ready to go? Hey, let me ask you, what do you, you're like, blah, da, 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 da. This makes sense to you, whatever. I end it with this. So what do you say? You ready to do this thing? I mean, how many of these little things like that? I'm telling you, that then, then the guy goes, because he's listening to what I'm saying. I make the logical argument. He's listening. He goes, okay. And I say, look, man, you admit that this is a benefit. You've been in the market for three years. You're going to do it sooner or later. Okay. You can afford it. This is the right thing to do. Let's take time out of it. What do you say? He's listening to me going, oh, okay, yeah, uh, oh, right, that makes sense, okay. And then I go, what do you say? And he goes, oh, shit. Oh, fuck, fuck, fuck. <laughs> Just from a, what do you say? How about this? Ink it right here. Let's roll. Little things like that. Those are so potent. If you are a critiquer and never done this before, then you'd laugh at it. But if you've done it, then you know what the hell I'm talking about. F8. Okay. Give me a minute. Exactly. Exactly. Just give me a minute, man. Okay. It's cru well, it's crucial with all that. Okay. Such an undervalued way to close. No doubt. What do you... Dude, what do you say? Hey, listen. Can I get you from a no to a maybe? Give me a yes. Hey, listen, if you can't do it for you, do it for me. <laughs> oh, man. That is such a powerful close, man. Listen, I, this is later down the road. Okay, the guy has the benefit. He knows he's, he's just negotiating for fun now. Scared to pull the trigger. You tried it all, and you got to go, mate. Listen, man, if you can't do it for you, I'm going to ask you. Do it for me. I spent all this time talking to you. You know it's the right thing to do. By the way, when you do, it's going to be a huge month for me. Tell them. Listen, when we do this deal, I'm going to make a mint on it. How many people would tell a guy that? By the way, like I've done it on change orders. By the way, you give me this change order, I'm going to make a lot of money on this. But you're going to get exactly what you want because I'm motivated to deliver because I'm making money on it. Okay, by the way, doing this thing, it's not your money. Doing this thing... Is going to be huge for my family. It's going to be huge with me paying tuition for my kid this month. 
If you can't, I'm going to ask you, if you can't do it for you, please do it for me. How many people are going to pull that out? Because I care about the end result, getting a deal. I don't care what he's thinking. If I got to pull on the, on the heartstring or I got to do me a favor, man, I'm going to use it. Guess what? A guy will justify that and go, you know what? It made sense. It's a lot of money, but I got to tell you, I like this guy. He's out here trying to do his thing, build a business, you know. Most people are going to say that they're reasonable. Most people are reasonable. I'm unreasonable. You need to be unreasonable. Most people are reasonable. And so they're going to say, look, he's trying to do his thing. He's delivering a service out here. He's trying to build a business. And I know that, you know, listen, he told me if we do this deal, it's going to be helpful to his family. And so, you know, it's the right thing to do. <laughs> this is pro level stuff here, man. Love it. Okay. Next one. Here's another one. Makes this very hard for people. You don't have a plan in order. Excuse me. You don't have a plan in order. Financial plan. If you don't think you can make a lot of money and make your financial dreams come true and be in control of your destiny, you're going to leave. This is why I don't understand with employers, man. This is what I don't get with, with employers. Even if you know, if, you, if you're an employer and even if you know, look, this guy, he has an opportunity here. He's going to get paid by me. He's going to be able to, you know, get cost of living increases. We're going to try to help him out, move up or whatever. Okay. You still got to put something in play for the guy to say, look, man, if you hit these metrics, if you end up bringing in business, if you do this, you're going to get to eat at the table as well. People need to be in control of their financial destiny. This is the problem that companies, all companies screw up on. Even my company, where I come from, was like that. Okay? You know, the guys at the top, me and, you know, four other guys, three other guys made all the money. Okay? Everybody else, you know, come and go, revolving door. Why? Because they don't get, who wants to be, a, who wants to be Cinderella, man? Who wants to not be in control? Who, who doesn't want to have nice things? Who don't want to win? You got to give people a plan, a framework, a pathway to controlling their financial destiny. If you do, they will stay. By the way, that's, that's called a 360 win. You don't, want a, you don't want a revolving door. You want to keep people. Entrepreneurs have a huge problem with this. For some reason, they don't, they don't want to spread the wealth. The fact of the matter is you're never going to have to spread the West wealth. You know, nine out of 10 people aren't going to do it, but at least have it in place so you can continue to use them as a resource because they'll stick around knowing that there's a, that there's a pathway. But you also as an entrepreneur and as a salesperson, you have not made a financial plan. Dude, how do we get you to seven figures this year? Who's done the math? Listen, AJ, you want to have a $20 million company. How do we get there? How, do, how does Beaumont become a $20 million contractor? You put a financial plan in place, you will recommit to that business. Guarantee it. You put a financial plan in place, you will recommit to selling whatever it is that you're selling. This is number, this is number five here. I got six points. This is number five of why people fail at this thing and can't do it. All five of these are monster hitter pieces here in psychology. Remember, communication in psychology. This is what it's about. Communication, keeping your altitude. Remember, committing to it, keeping your altitude, being in control, and then the psychology portion. Earn their loyalty, be the pro, take control. That's what they want. Exactly. By the way, you deliver, Nathan, they're going to be loyal. This is what I, this goes back to some of my other stuff. People aren't going to do business with you because they like you. And they ain't going to be loyal to you because they like you. They're going to be loyal to you for what they're getting. Competency. You guys come back and watch this show because you're like, Wilkinson's company is going to deliver something that I know I could use and run with. Not necessarily because you like me. You maybe like me because I'm competent. That's the point. That's the exchange here. You're going to win their loyalty by over-delivering all the time. 
Okay, AJ, your customers are going to love you when you build them the dream home and it's perfect and it's built like, you know, rock solid. It's, it's Noah's Ark. Okay, they're going to be like, you want to get a house built? I got a guy for you and he'll hook you up. Okay, and number six. And number six. Too reasonable. Now, listen, I talk about reasonability, spirit of cooperation in 360 deals all the time. You're always going to hear me. Be reasonable. Isn't that fair? Let's work in a spirit of cooperation. We need a 360 deal here. If it's lopsided, I can't do it. The reason why I'm saying these things is because I'm appealing to everyone's reasonability, but I am not reasonable. I'm unreasonable with my expectations. I am unreasonable with how I deliver. I got to over deliver, man. I got to come with the heat. If I tell you guys I'm going to be here, I'm going to be here, dude, and I'm coming with it. Okay? If I, if I get contracted by the city of New York, okay, it's on, ding dong. I'm delivering. I'm unreasonable with my expectations, with my customers, with my clients, with my life. Okay? And I am definitely going to be unreasonable in this deal. But I'm going to appeal to your reasonability because I know you're reasonable. Here's the thing, man. When you understand these things, you're walking around with the cheat code. What is this? Remember what I said, communication and psychology. What would this be? Psychology. Listen, you're a reasonable guy. Let's be reasonable here, man. Your initial reaction is going to be like, okay, you're right. I should be reasonable. Okay, that's a weakness, man. That's a weakness. And when I find out that you're a reasonable guy, trust me, I'm going to put the hurt on. I'm going to put the hurt on because I can take advantage of a reasonable guy. Can't take advantage of an unreasonable guy. Okay? Okay? Don't misconstrue what I'm saying here. You're never ripping people off, but you know what I mean. I'm talking about getting what needs to be done. You could be a nice veterinarian, but you kill their pet. It's over. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Seems to be a lot of buffering. You guys experiencing buffering here? I don't know what's up with that. I went on uh, Instagram Live too, and it was like, you got a poor connection, okay? The freaking thing is right there with the fastest internet that Cox can give me. Okay, you're reasonable. I'm good. No lag. It was earlier. A little earlier. No lag here. Okay, good, good, good. Yeah, it's, this shit's out of my control. Um, okay. Those are six reasons why this shit is hard, okay? Like I said, there's a reason why I got a piecemeal. We're, we're an hour in. I went through six pieces of data here. One of those pieces of data that you add to your game right now is going to elevate you. It's too much puke. It's too much data going on here. I got a bunch more, but I'm going to save it for, uh, now tomorrow I'm going to be in Vegas doing risk on Todd Alt show. Maybe I'm going to do Brad Lee's show. We'll see because they're in the same office and, um, and then I'll be back on Friday. So I'm going to, I'm, I'm bringing cameras and all that. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do my show, but I will, I will definitely be, you know, going on live Instagram live on here when I can. So Wednesday and Thursday, no show. I'll be back on Friday, okay? And then obviously next week we're rocking and rolling, okay? I got a bunch more stuff here, but that's it for today, okay? I gotta, I'm going to save this stuff for, for next stuff, for next time. Plenty to work with, man. Plenty to work with here. By the way, this is all how you handle objections, man, and influence somebody. And then you're going to use these concepts and ideas, this psychology here, okay? And you're going to come up with your own stuff. You're going to have to, by the way. You can't deliver my stuff. The way I do it, the way you do it, are going to be two, diff two different things, right? You're going to get away with things that I could never get away with, and I'm going to get away with things that you could never get away with because we're not the same people. That's what makes this wonderful. There are some serious concepts and misunderstandings out there, okay? But every single person, once you understand this stuff, you apply it in your own way, you're going to deliver it in your own way, you're going to succeed in your own way. Danny, I appreciate you guys for being here. Welcome to the Winner's Circle. Okay? And I'll be checking you guys out. I'll be back here live on Friday. Be great.